These records that the FBI got from Mar-a-Lago have classifications that include top secret and sensitive compartmentalized information, which is a category that's designed to protect secrets that, which, if revealed, could harm U.S. interests. Now, the FBI executed this search warrant, and they did that based on these several laws, as we've reported. But we don't know who would be targeted or if this was, as we were discussing with our experts at the top of the hour, just a focused effort to recover materials, and there might never be any charges. Donald Trump had the power to declassify, which certainly complicates some aspects of this, although it's not a blank check for anything after he left office. Given the issues of intelligence here, having done what's in there in the receipt and what's the law, we turn to, well, a co-equal branch of government that also deals with intelligence. Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy of Illinois is on the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, thanks for making time tonight. Thank you, Ari. Um, when you look at this as a security matter, almost putting to the side uh, the difficult, intricate questions around the criminal enforcement of the intelligence laws, which, as we've reported, have been used against many senior officials, Democrats like Sandy Berger in the Clinton administration, General Petraeus, who served both parties but was cheered by Republicans. Let's put that to the side and just ask you, what do you see as the national security risk here, if any, based on the new information we have? I'm, I'm looking to pick it back up. Based on the new information we have, uh, in this rather remarkable list? Well, I think that uh, what draws my attention more than anything else are the statutes mm -hmm. that are at play here, including the Espionage Act and the, the portion of the Espionage Act related to defense information. Um, and when you mix the uh, classification TSSCI and uh, the words defense information, mm -hmm. that raises a big question because, um, you know, I... I Members of the committee, intelligence committee, such as myself and others, we deal with these TSSCI documents every day. But there are literally people looking over our shoulders as we uh, review these documents. And never have we ever taken those documents out of a secure facility. In fact, they, take, they keep an inventory to make sure that every single document remains in the possession uh, of the folks who are the custodians in the secure facility. Would they have specific material? And again, we're, we're not asking you to reveal what you can't or speculate on what's in there. We've been careful about that. But because we're in we're an acronym soup now here, you give me five letters okay. twice. If we were in a movie or a hypothetical, are we talking about an assessment? Are we talking about the locations of things? What, what kind of thing are we talking about? It could be any any of those issues. Um, it could also be about covert action programs. It could be about, um, in, in fact, it could be about programs that not even all members of the intelligence community at even senior levels are aware of. Um, that is how uh, sensitive that information is. When they say compartmented, that means that only certain people even within the intelligence community are allowed to see those documents and others are not. So we're talking about stuff that, um, quite frankly, our adversaries should never get a hold of. Yeah. Um, Republicans have had a couple different points of attack this week. Take a listen. When you've got an attorney general that has a history of going after parents because they go to a school board meeting, but not to talk to the American public, that creates real problems. I do not trust uh, the FBI. I don't trust the upper echelons of the Department of Justice. This corruption has run deep. It's been running deep since the Hillary Clinton email scandal. The FBI raid of President Trump is a complete abuse and overreach of its authority. So before you jump to conclusions <clears throat> and just accept information from un, from sources who are not the attorney general, who are not the director of the FBI, let's see what the facts are. Let's see. I mean, this is what I guess some people didn't know, that it would come out and it would appear yeah. again. The, this is subject to the courts. And I, I will report if there's a court proceeding that casts doubt on any of this, if this material is not substantiated, we, we will go beyond the warrant. Uh, but we already have more information now than we did yesterday that does suggest that the FBI found a lot of material that was, in their view, improperly taken or stolen by Donald Trump or others around him and held even after it was under subpoena. And that's what they took. Now, if they took any of Mr. Trump's personal property, for example, that they don't have access to, 
as you know, and I think viewers understand, he, he can go to court and try to get it back. Um, what right. does the think- evidence here show you in response to what we just heard uh, from some of your colleagues? Well, look, I don't think the FBI was there to take his bowling trophies from the White House. I think that this was stuff that um, obviously they at some point they asked for it back. It appears uh, it appears that the National Archives working with lawyers uh, try to get it back, um, even had a subpoena issued for uh, this information and it, it didn't get returned. And so uh, given all the other concerns we have about the president, people who are surrounding him, their extensive foreign ties, their financial distress. There's always been a concern about uh, just a counterintelligence risk associated with people like that, especially when they have access to such precious information. Can I just address one other thing that was mentioned in some of those comments, which is you hear a lot of vitriol and you hear a lot of rather um, sometimes violent rhetoric from these folks And when they do that, it leads to the problems that we saw yesterday at this FBI field office in Cincinnati. And I think that they really need to cool their rhetoric big time. Are you Uh, saying that my colleagues are you saying that we just heard from uh, House leaders, McCarthy, Stefanik, are you saying they contribute to the environment that caused that violence? Yeah, it it, it kind of feeds a a climate where pretty much uh, people engage in. Uh, what I what, what I think is politically violent rhetoric, mm. and we all know what that ha- what happens when you have a uh, kind of a echo chamber of this stuff, uh, especially on social media. There are nuts out there who will basically act upon that rhetoric. Yeah, I, pr- I appreciate you raising that. We've been we've been covering and tracking all of that. Final question: uh, These are major intelligence breaches, according to the FBI. Uh, what? If anything, will the Intelligence Committee that you serve on do about this? Well, I think, first of all, we'll probably want to um, ask for an update or briefing on these materials in a little more depth. And what, if anything, is being done to make sure that anything related to those issues is safeguarded. Um, And of course, we want to know if there were any consequences associated with um, any potential uh, breaches that occurred here. Um, Suffice it to say that I'm sure that there are professionals right now as we speak in the intelligence community who are trying to figure this out. And of course, as part of the intelligence committee, we we have to exercise oversight with regard to that process. Understood. Congressman, thank you for making time here on Friday evening. A big breaking story.